This was a question sent to me by another student, and I've modified this from the original version, but the strategies and tactics that we're gonna talk about in this video apply to that question and to any other question of its type. So what I wanna talk about in this video, is like the two ways to see this question. Most students, when they look at this, they see the variable in the angle, they see variables in the choices, they immediately think set up an equation or set up an inequality. And certainly there is a way to solve that problem algebraically, and I'll show you that towards the end. But when I see a question like this, sure, we can set it up algebraically, but I'm thinking immediately, what can I do to avoid algebra? Algebra can sometimes be time consuming, sometimes hard to follow. It's abstract, so it's hard to get our minds around what these different values might mean and how we put them together. So a lot of times when you're working with numbers, when you can make it a problem of arithmetic rather than of algebra, it's just more concrete, easier to, to handle when you're dealing with real numbers and real values. So I'm always trying to look for a way to do that. And on questions like these, there's typically two ways to do that. One is to plug in your own numbers. The other is to plug in the answers, and that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna test the answer choices based on the parameters of the problem and see which choice must be true. So we're told B lies on AD. We're told that the measure of angle A is one half B and the measure of angle ACB is 30. Which of the following must be true? And this is gonna be important in a second. We're looking for what must be true, not what could be true, but what always has to be the case. So if we start with B is 30, we would plug this in and just kind of see what consequences follow. So if B is 30, that would mean this angle would be 15 because it's one half B, which means this would add up to 45, which would mean this angle would have to be 135 because they've all got to add up to 180. And at first glance, this seems pretty plausible. Nothing seems really wrong about this. It, it does seem possible that B could be 30. However, remember the question is, say, is asking us what must be true, not what could be true, not what's possible, but what always has to be true. And while it's the case that 30 could be the value for B, that's not the only value it could be. Indeed, if we check uh, choice B, we'll see when B is 60, that would give us the case where one half B would be 30, these two would be 30, this right here would then be 120. And again, that kind of seems plausible. You may look at these sides and say, well, wait a minute, or these sides, you know, these two sides aren't congruent, so how can both of these be equal, right? That would make an isosceles, so maybe it's not the case that B could be 60 or that this could be 30. And even if we agreed with that, couldn't B be 31? Sure, you don't. You want to be very careful when you're looking at a geometric figure that you don't make assumptions about, well, really broad assumptions about the sizes of things. So certainly these don't look the same. So maybe thinking this is going to end up being 30 would be wrong, but you know this could end up being 16 degrees or it could be 15.5, and we just don't know. It's too hard to tell. So even though A and or B could be true, we're looking for the ones that must be true. Let's test some values here. Here we're given B is between zero and 120. So let's just pick a B value. Let's say B is, I don't know, 40. If B were 40, let's do that in green. If B were 40, then if we plugged this in, we would say, okay, uh, this would be 20, which means this would add up to 50, which means this would be 130. Again, that seems plausible. And notice this is saying that B could be anything between zero and 120, which means that one half B would have to be between zero and 60. And that seems pretty plausible. So let's hold off on C for a bit. With D, let's pick a value in here. Let's pick D, uh, choice B, uh, or ang angle B, or value for B, between 120 and 180. Let's make that 150. So again, we'll make a different color. If this is 150, we plug that in here. We're gonna get 75, which means this angle right here 75 plus 30 is 105. This would have to be uh, 75 as well. And we know this can't be true because they tell us in this picture that this is a right angle. And therefore, this angle right here must be obtuse. It's bigger than 90. And we can see that uh, not only based on the way it looks, but if this is 90, this angle must be acute. It must be something like, I don't know, 60 or whatever. And which means this angle would have to be whatever it would take to add up to 180 here. And since this is acute, we know this has to be obtuse. I mean, you can look at it, but again, looking at it's a little sketchy, but just based on the fact that this is a right triangle, you would have to know that this is an obtuse angle. So this can't be 75. And in fact, 
if we pick any B between 120 and 180 or between 180 and 240, we're going to get a value for this, which is not going to be obtuse. So we can get rid of uh, D and E and all, all we're left with here is C because when this angle is between zero and 60, notice if this is 30, th whatever's left over is going to be obtuse, right? As long as you're between zero and 60. So that's how we get choice C. So that's the plug-in way. You're plugging in the choices. I think the question I made it here is actually harder than it was on the real test. But in any event, you plug in your values, you see what works, and you eliminate what you can. Worst case scenario, you get down to a guess. Best case scenario, you get down to the last choice standing, which in this case has to be choice C. Now, how would you do this algebraically? Well, you know that these three angles have got to add up to 180. So I'm going to call this one temporarily X. So I know X plus 30 plus one half B has got to equal 180. I also know from what we've discussed earlier that X has got to be greater than 90. It's got to be obtuse. So from that, what can we learn? Well, if I rearrange this, I'm going to get X is equal to 30 plus one half B. Sorry. It's going to be equal to, I'm going to move those to the other side, 180 minus 30 minus one half B. And I know that this is all greater than 90 because X has got to be greater than 90, right? So it's just setting up an equation and then throwing in an inequality. So now I'm left with 180 minus 30 minus one half B is greater than 90. I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging here. This is going to be 150. So I'm going to get negative one half B has got to be greater than, uh, ch -ch -ch greater than negative 60. So therefore, B has got to be less than, remember to flip the sign, 120. And since an angle can't be negative, we know on the other end it's got to be greater than zero and it can't be equal to zero because an angle can't equal zero. So long story short, we know our B has got to be less than 120, which gets us C. So if you can see this algebraic way, it's pretty nice. It gets you the answer directly but it's a little tricky. Plugging in, testing some values, seeing what happens when you plug in these, these angles uh, makes a lot more sense and it's just easier to handle. So I recommend when you can, when you can avoid algebra, plugging in the choices on other problems, plugging in your own numbers, testing things out, experimenting, and eliminating down to the answer. And or you could try the algebra. It's just this is usually how I approach problems first. I'm going right for the plug-in rather than algebra. Even though I'm comfortable with both, I'm just a little bit more comfortable with plugging in. So I highly recommend you do that on questions like this one. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll. And you can find the link in the description below the video.